And I want to ask you a bunch of questions. And I want to have them answered immediately. Welcome to Black Irish Podcast. <laughs> there and welcome to an all new episode of black irish podcast with myself brendan mccorkle and mike the smoothest man in the room crawford what's up buddy what's going on my guy i wish i was the smoothest man in the room man i'm just trying just trying to get by my guy you know ah well before we get into this episode we've been doing pretty well lately and and getting some shares and subscribes and follows so i'm going to tell it to everybody at the top of the episode do us a favor follow subscribe share do whatever you got to do It's fun, it helps us, and I always say it at the tail end, and it turns out it works. So I figured do it on the front end, maybe people that don't stay for the outro can do it. And it doesn't hurt you any, people. It doesn't hurt you to click a button. If you're already watching or listening or come across us. You click on so much bullshit anyway. Click on our bullshit. We are bullshit. It's fun bullshit. Just click it and share it. That's my LC that might like it. You know, if you don't. Click, 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 click. Yeah. Especially because, you know, Mike is all good these days. Mike finally paid up on his bet. <laughs> this is how we're going to start the show this week, sir. That's how we're going to start the show. It's a big deal. You finally paid on a bet. It's almost been a year. For those of you who mm-hmm. don't know, for the new listeners or people who have are catching up, it's been almost a year. Last year, we bet that Matt, I bet that Matt Stafford would have over 4,500 yards passing in the season. Mike said under. He got over, and the deal was Mike was going to have to shave from the neck down completely. This finally happened. So apparently there were a couple of debacles in between, but, I mean, this process didn't even start for like eight months. So So, I don't feel too bad about it, but tell tell me how this came to be. I've cut myself a couple times in this process, so that's why I went with an electric razor. When I finally got it done, um, I don't know, man. I just woke up. I knew I had to do it. It needed to be done. And so this morning when I got in the shower, I said, man, let me go ahead and take care of this for today's episode. But lately we've been Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday at this time, Wednesday at this time. So it was no perfect. But this day we are on our regularly scheduled. So everything's copacetic. Um, but I would have let Brendan show you all the picture because he did show my ugly ass feet on the internet. <laughs> But he has a chest picture, so he could have put that as Okay, I didn't know, man. Bit. I didn't know you were... See, this is the <laughs> thing, okay? You, <laughs> no, I, I thought I was doing so, my man a favor, so I screen grabbed uh, a shot of... he. T- Mike took two videos. The first one, absolutely disgusting. There's just clumps of hair everywhere. By the way, in, like, every corner of the shower. So it's just him filming, like, his feet... And so I could see the the hair trimmings, which I appreciate. It's like the side of his leg. But then it's like, you got clumps on top of the soap, on the soap dish. You got clumps of hair in the corners of the shower. It was like, oh, no. Oh, no. This is so I had gross. way too much hair, bro. <laughs> and not for nothing, hair. dude. Like, right at the end of that first video you sent me of like, hey, look, I... Look, it's you can see my feed. Here's all the trimmings, and you're like, it was like 14 seconds, 15 seconds, and you like go and you're like, look at all this hair on the thing, whatever. And then right as you go back to your feet, I catch like the quarter of the left side of a testicle. <laughs> I'm like, I know he didn't catch that. <laughs> Definitely did. I didn't really look at the video. I was just like, I what? Oh man, he's got some hair. Oh, that's wrinkly skin. No, oh, damn it. <laughs> oh, man, that is absolutely disgusting. I'm sorry. Man. I'm absolutely trying Don't to worry. I only oh, rewatched no. it three times to make sure. But it, and it's <laughs> like it's like the side of the walnut. You know what I mean? Like you can barely even you could you can only tell because I have testicles and I know what they look like. They're not black like yours, but you know. 
I definitely tried to avoid any, any genitalia showing. Yeah, no, I appreciate clearly, it, but you you barely missed. You, had, you had a nut slip. <laughs> you had a nut slip. It's okay. And I didn't rewatch the video before I took it to you. I literally opened your message, hit the video button. So as soon as I finished, all I got to do is hit. Send. Yeah, I appreciate waking up to that. By the way, that's that's glorious. Nothing to kill I, I, your morning wood like your friend <laughs> shaving in the shower. <laughs> Sorry, about two the videos. Time difference. That's all right. I jerked oh, off anyway. Oh no 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 no! What? At least five videos were made, bro. You oh oh, oh! You only sent me the I good just, ones. <laughs> these, these videos were wild. Like, Are you sure you didn't so fluff much. your balls a little bit? And I'm, I was trying to do so much to get this done, bro. Like it is so difficult. How to long did shave. it take you? Oh, I was in the hour shower for like an hour and a half. I'm not going to lie to you. Because you have no, to do it. To... Like you think you do it, and then you go back and you're like, it just didn't even pick up a whole section. Because oh, it was just full of hair. It just grazed right over it. You got to rinse. And as someone who doesn't shave often, like, so I don't know, have no clue what this is going through. So I go through it, I see patches. And now that I'm already shaved, you got to get the patches. Like, you can't just leave the patches there. So you got to get the patches. So I was in there doing that. And then trying to record it without getting my phone wet and showing you genitalia. <laughs> so that shit was hard because I was doing this all alone. And balance people. is not your thing. <laughs> man, it was such a hard thing, but I'm glad I finally paid up my bet, man. I'm glad, I'm glad you did too. I well, So what's funny is I screen grabbed the one. I was like, oh, the other one, he did like a face shot, like a selfie shot from like the chest up of you shaving your chest. I was like, oh, he definitely... Doesn't want me putting like his chest out there, but hey, I'm not gonna lie, dude. Like I saw, I noticed you threw your chains on backwards. You know, it's like chains never come off. I got that. I could also yeah. see that you had definitely, as someone who has shaved their chest before, a couple different ways. I know the first time I did it, I started to do it, it was like, oh shit. I have to do this like three times to get all the hairs. Like you just have to keep going. So I had saw like the. Like the lawnmower marks on your chest of where the razor had been. And I'm like, oh, he's got to go back and clean up. And you were sure enough, like your face was just like, I've already done this. But like you're doing it over again. You got to the point where you weren't even looking at what you were doing. You're just like, I just know I need to do it at least like two more times. <laughs> and the scary part is trying to, is start trying to avoid getting a nip because you're so weird. Dude, I'm not going to lie. I wanted some pepperoni way. pizza after that video. Your chest was looking pretty good, but <laughs> <laughs> I had a hankering for some peps. Oh, oh, man. If, I a, if I catch a nip up in here, I'm going to be so hot. I've already cut my legs up. Now I'm have a nip cut. This is going to be torture. And you're going to go. Thing, here's gonna... the thing that I'm interested in, in knowing is two things. Did you shave your ass whole? Absolutely, I agree. Man. Oh, you know, agree. righty then. I'm agree to okay. do something. Man. Let me you ask know, you. Go, okay, go, so let, we'll build to this. So, as of right now, as of this morning, I know it's probably like, man, this is new, fresh. You know, even when you get fresh stubble, it's going to be the first day is going to be a little rough. The day is the first day is rough. Like everybody was, oh, it's starting to grow back. Is rough. No, day one is rough. <laughs> yeah. I tell you all now because it's razor burn and shaving shave. and just ugh, it hurts and no, no, burns. No. <laughs> Fuck all that because I use shaving cream, so it's not that bad. The worst part is my balls itch <laughs> like nobody's <laughs> yeah, business. They do. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that head. dead skin on your elbow it's like you can never get the itch to actually be satisfied you just can only keep scratching it because it's dead skin <laughs> bro let me tell you all, bro the hair on your balls don't ever cut it just leave it don't ever bother it because i'm telling you now the itch makes you look like a dirty filthy animal <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so to have to walk around trying to scratch find it find a way to discreetly scratch your balls. <laughs> do you do the move at, when you have to go to the office? Like like at school, when you were in like school and would get you know school boners in the middle of class and you had to do the six to midnight, tuck it under your belt buckle, mm -hmm. under your belt? Well, the benefit, yeah, the benefit to me is that I'm only in the office today. And That's even good. though it's like shit, I can move about it after. As freely, so I just keep going. Yeah, to the but you do the and... like you do the lift your shirt up with one hand, like oh, I'm just stretching out, and then you slide oh, yeah. the other <laughs> hand under and do the ball scratch, so nobody can see. It's like a tent for your hand. 
Little covert oh, tent. I just you ruined like a bunch of dudes. They're like, God damn it. Now when I go out with my lady, she's going to be like, I know what you're doing. I'm not touching your <laughs> stinky nuts. You're going to rub my face with your stinky nuts hand after this? Put your arm around if my she's shoulder? A real, if she's a real girl, she shouldn't matter because she's probably doing more than touching your nuts, buddy. Just yeah, saying. that's true. I'm just saying. Okay, so <laughs> let me ask you this, though. Does any of it feel good yet? I'm not going to lie. Uh... Not having hair on my legs and my arms is not a bad thing, right? As, as someone who wears lotion on a regular basis, like it's not. It's a bad pretty thing slick. Though. It's like, oh, oh, okay, oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know if I, I want to go through the labor of doing this, but hey, I'm here. This is nice. Yeah, if I had somebody to do it, I'd do it on a regular basis. I ain't gonna lie to you. Like it's not a bad thing. The, the chest and stomach care is actually like a great thing. Like I was actually, okay. I'm, I'm perfectly okay with not having any chest or stomach care. So shave that off was perfectly fine. Only thing about it is the balls itching. Like that shit is yeah. itching. That's that yeah. doesn't go away. That's the thing that nobody says about this is the balls itch all the time. All the time. All the time <laughs> until they grow all the way back. And then your body is so <laughs> used to itching your balls that it's just a natural thing you're gonna start <laughs> doing. So I wanna know if you're like have a ball scratching issue in like a month and you're like, Hey man, I can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely probably won't be able to stop, but yeah, ball it's like crazy. Oh man. Do, right do you like your chest? Though, do you feel you like you're skinnier after you shaved? Yes. Yeah, I right. I feel skinnier and I feel I feel refreshed in a way. Like, nice. I haven't because I've never cut my hair off fully besides us talking to this bet. And I did it before with the razor to try to fulfill this bet. But again, people I cut myself so it didn't go as well as I planned. So this is the first time I actually like like all the way completed the process and it doesn't feel bad like i will say i feel refreshed a bit yeah i do nice. I dude say. wait till you take a shit with no hair <laughs> like a solid one that yet. yeah like one of your solid chick-fil-a shits like dude you are gonna be like uh-oh my nipples are hard i'm happy i don't know what's going on yeah, I haven't, I haven't done that yet, but it'll probably come tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I should hope so. Oh, and are you gonna are you gonna upkeep the chesticles? I might upkeep the chesticles. I'm not gonna. Lie. Yeah. I mean, I have the I have the fucking sixty dollar razor. That's now. what I'm, I'm saying. Now you're problem. equipped. Yeah. And people pay me next week because I'm clearly, as you all can see in my background, I'm not at home. Maybe next week I'm getting. A slight viewing of oh, a, a nip slip instead of a nut slip. The nut slip is just I don't for know me. About a nip slip, maybe like some taco meat in the arm or leg, you know. Oh, there you go. Uh, just, just have one of your shirts. Just wear a V or just wear the thing unbuttoned. Yeah. Just go all Luther Vandross on it. You'd be yeah, all right. I'm just in a public forum right now, so I don't want to be over here like stripping my people. So next yeah, week, that's okay. Again, we don't need that. I'll prove that I actually paid. The I bet. shaved my chest, even to... though Brendan did post me my feet. And I took it down. To my chest. I took it down. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I don't know how long it was up there. So some of our viewers might have seen it. So if they did see it, then they've already been verified. And yeah. and you that can you have regular feet. Continue. By the way, the, this dude's weird about his feet. Doesn't care about his chest, but you don't want your feet out there. No, Why are your feet so feet. private to you? I don't know. You wear it Crocs. Know. I thought you With didn't socks. care about your feet. With socks. You still can't see my feet, my guy. I can I see that you don't care about your socks. feet. <laughs> Every day, socks. I remember the first time we had... Would you met? rather somebody see your feet or your dick? Mm, good question. Probably my dick. I'm, I'm very confident in... Without How much more confident are you now without hair? <laughs> Just a tad bit more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, an extra Aren't half inch helps. First time we, first time we were at what? Uh, who was that? Janet's dad's house, rest his soul. Yeah. You were there the first time I get it, guy, when I was swimming in socks, and everybody like pretty much freaked the hell out. Like, yo, you don't take your socks off. You really don't. Oh, I forgot you swim in your socks. I forgot about that. Yeah, that was, that was, that was. You want Kemba, to know? So you were definitely there. Yeah. Oh, now I remember vividly. Oh, I'm like yeah. this fucking guy in his socks. <laughs> <laughs> it's the opposite of wearing a shirt in a pool for your feet. It's weird. <laughs> I mean, I get it, water shoes, but you're like, no, just feet. I left my water shoe. That's why the socks yeah. on. I usually have I own water shoes. Nice so too, right? interesting thing is, I used to have a thing about feet, like a real like stigma against them. Like feet are disgusting. Keep your nasties off of me. Like, if I was with a girl, they had to wear socks in bed, and if their barefoot touched my foot, it was like, 
if that happens again, you're gone. Get the fuck out of my bed. And so, like, didn't matter who it was. Didn't matter. So much so to where I would just didn't like feet. There was a period of time where I wore shoes and socks to the beach. Like, on the now sand. You bring that up. I got a random question. All the way down to the water. Hanging out. Take them off. Go in the water. Dry them off really well. Put them back on. Walk back to the car. And I would go to the <laughs> beach, like, a few times a month. <laughs> See, you, you were worse than me at one point. Yeah, I was. So what, random question, since okay. we're talking about, like, you don't want girls to touch your feet. Say you're, you meet a girl. Mm-hmm. Y'all are intercourse and then she rams her thumb up your butt. Like, no prerequisite. What does that have to do with feet? <laughs> if it was her big toe, I'd have an issue. <laughs> I'm just, just, you I mean, if it's, with the woman, I, I think I would feel the that. same way as if she would if I stuck my thumb up her asshole without asking. Probably um, not well, right. A woman, a woman probably would enjoy that. Might have been well, yeah, but you still have to ask, like, hey, can I put something in your asshole? And then you have to negotiate the size. And then if it's <laughs> good enough for what you really want to put in there, then you win. Or oh, maybe you got to build to it. I don't know. Start with the thumb oh, in the ass right. on the third date, and then, you know, maybe by date 10, you find out if she's a backdoor lady. I don't know. No, but I want to be in that ass because I've heard that happen, like, to a dude. Like, he met a girl on, like, the internet. First time yeah, you're not allowed to she... sexually assault anybody. It doesn't matter who you <laughs> she, are. She, she butt Randall. See, well, now that's I'm something where you. if that has to be pre-discussed, like, if you're going to hook Absolutely. up with somebody, like, dude, if you're going to hook up with somebody, not for nothing, just be like, hey, is there anything you're definitely into? Is there anything you're definitely not into? And I have that plus my, now I have that information plus what I bring to the table and I'll work within those parameters. Let's go have some fun naked. You know, that's okay. Yeah. So if she's like, hey, man, sometimes I like sticking my finger in dudes butts and it could be like hey man i don't know about that but if we're kind of in it then sure <laughs> or if it's like nah dude i don't do that then it's like oh okay well now we know and then if she does it anyway then that's assault brother yeah so anybody who best knows don't randomly stick your finger in no one but man or woman please don't like that actual butt actual okay butt. the only thing i will say all right all right <laughs> there is a move that doesn't involve fingers where you can kind of test the waters. It's a what? taste test. Okay? No, no, no. When you're going down, <laughs> when you're going down on a lady, okay, you got to start getting into it, okay? You got to really be going up and down. You got to go the, the length of the labia here, okay? You got to go through the whole system. You got to clean the whole curtain. And once you do that, if you're really getting into it, she's into it. If you want to test the waters, you just go a little lower and start, you know, tasting the whole dish. And then if she doesn't balk at it, if then you're cool. Then maybe you can introduce a finger when you go to the other side, you know, stick a thumb in, whatever. But, oh, then they are laughing as they're picking up their bow buns in the freezer section. <laughs> go get some more butter, baby. But if she goes like, hey, you go, whoa, whoa, whoa. accidente. I didn't want to taste that taco anyway. Let me go back to the pink. No. You're good. No one experience went nothing like that. If she doesn't Girl, want the enchirito, go back to the No, taco. no, no. It was the other way around. Like I was yeah. the one getting getting taken care of and she tried to go further and I snatched her ass up so fast like what with a finger or with her tongue <laughs> with her tongue bro oh <laughs> why didn't you just find out what no 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 I don't know what if it's not her. in it's not inside she's like in the rim it's called a I rim job Mike I, none of that around none of that. Mike, the world around so the world I don't judge anyone for what they like Mike, but how do you know like you nothing. don't like it Cause it's around my butt. I don't know okay. Around when you butt. take this no haired shit later and you get excited and you look at yourself in the mirror and go, Oh man, like you're going to be like, maybe that chick should have licked my asshole. Nope. I'm past. Thanks though. Thanks for the advice. I'm guessing you said what if you've experienced you're in a coma and, and the only way to wake you up is to have somebody lick your asshole. 
Like really I'll good. I'll be in a coma. I'll be coma up. But you'd be in a <laughs> coma. You wouldn't even know somebody was licking your asshole until you woke up, and then it'd be like, "Hey, what are you doing down there?" But you probably couldn't even talk. You'd just be like, <laughs> and then trying to move, <laughs> and then now you're just got a boner, and you're in a full body cast. You don't know what's happening. You I wouldn't be okay with being man. revived with a quick tongue to the bung? No, I would not. This is absolutely ridiculous, dude. I don't. I don't know. I mean. I guess I understand what you're going for here, but I don't know. I still, uh, I like the fact that you paid up all the way on your bet. I appreciate it very much. I'm and, not fully paid up, but the second part is on you. So if you yeah, 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 the ear, the ear thing, the shave bet, or at least listen, or at least tell me where to get it from. I'll take care of. It. Now that we have one in the books here, okay, we have your second loss officially solidified as debt paid. We've got a third one that we've got to get to, which will get handled soon enough. Because now now it's on me. Now I can take control of this. I'm fine with that. I like that yeah. you're going to keep the chest. You know, you could just when nair it. When it comes it. to fantasy, my team is starting to fucking suck. Oh, anyway, we're going to we're gonna get to that. Let me ask you <laughs> something. S- speaking of your workspace, have you ever had any workspace invaders? Like people that... You know, you're just working and they're just like always up in your space and you're like, listen, man, I'm trying to get some shit done here. Yes. Does it happen often? Not at my current job, but it used to happen often because I was also not just the manager. I was also the SME, which is the subject matter expert. So not along with just escalation, like any fucking question they had, they could come ask me. And they weren't supposed to get up out their seats to ask me. They were supposed to use either the team's or the uh, instant message feature that we had, or send me an email. But it used to be a line outside my fucking cubicle, bro. A line. Like, three people in line at, waiting to ask questions. And I used to tell them all the time, did you ask your coworker? Like, y'all should be able to answer these damn questions for each other. <laughs> They're all coming to me. All the, you know, it used to fucking piss me off. But that's why I used to have to work 15, 16-hour days, because the work that I was supposed to get done during the day, I never did, because I was helping these motherfuckers all day excuse my language but yeah man that part is tough me. so it, it, it got really out of control i'm right. the space what? invader you're the space invader yeah i'm the space invader you invade people's space at work all the time no well when i used to have an office job i would just like i don't know i'd fuck about with talking quite a bit but that was also only like when i had like downtime or we were supposed to talk about something else i would just kind of linger a little bit and shoot the shit just because i was usually half bored um but now i'm getting in other people's workspace because the have you ever seen the movie judgment night no it's a good one um there's a place that i do comedy that I Black Knight. with martin lawrence i've seen that many times as well <laughs> it's not very good but martin yeah. lawrence in a kid's it's movie a gotta movie. watch it so the place that i do comedy on sunday evenings late is called liquid zoo love this place i go there every chance i get every sunday um but it's not the uh not the best part of town i think i've talked about this place before on here so there's a lot of when you say not best part of town we're not from california so come on give up some more background well there's just like is this place located Oh, it's Except on Sepulveda and Sherman Way, right in the middle of oh. the heart of Van Nuys, right by the 405 freeway, just east. East of the freeway like, is always a mess. I'm more so what gangs are, <laughs> reside here. You it's know? mainly uh, crazy people. <laughs> it's mainly okay. crazy people, drug addicts, homeless people, and then the people I get in the way of, which is the prostitutes. Hmm. So... <laughs> it's just kind of like... I don't even want to know how you're getting in the way of the prostitutes. Oh, I'll tell okay. you. Because they stand in the middle of the street. Like, it is... That's how ridiculous this area is. That's allowed and cops will just drive by like, not even messing with it. Nope. Don't even care. Like, that's the least of our worries in this area. So It's crazy that that happens and in other states. You can't even circle the block where prostitutes will be or you'll get pulled over and locked up for solicitation. Well, it's one of those things where they definitely, like, if they see something, they go walk up the street. But it's in, like, 
It's on Sepulveda. And then you go a half a block down any street and it's all residential. So they just walk back into like the residential areas when they aren't feeling great or when they're going to meet up with the John or whatever and they go walk to their car. But it's kind of funny because sometimes like, you know, I'm walking by and I always, you know, just kind of like make sure they see me not want them to talk to me. And then like put my head back down and keep going. Just walk past them. Not be rude or anything. Just walk by whatever. And, but they have to look out because they make eye contact with everybody driving by. Every single person driving by. And so there's sometimes I can't find parking because there's not, there's certain places I refuse to park my car. I'm like, uh, that's very dimly lit over there. No fucking chance. I will all come back with no, <laughs> no wheels. This is not okay. So I have to park like on the street in front of somewhere with a light so I could, you know, like, give myself the best chance of not getting my shit fucked with. And so sometimes I got to loop around the block. And to them, if they see the same car twice, they're like, oh, baby. Oh, baby. And I'm like, no, baby. No, baby. (laughs) No. No, no, no. And I don't know if you know this, Mike, either. But uh, it's wintertime now. Fall is upon us. It's wintertime. And uh, big girls get the cold shift. (laughs) <laughs> that's what happens i was like the the talent around here has changed recently what's going i was like oh it's cold those girls are during the day now because they're like i am not walking around because they're still very scantily clad you know they have like a big overcoat over some lingerie and it's open to a different degree depending on the traffic situation so what is cold being that you dig? Southern California, my I friend. mean, they're standing out there in, like, mid-40s. It gets to mid-40s? I didn't even know. Yeah, when I was driving home the other night and did not wave to one of these ladies uh, howling at the moon, it was, uh, like, 46 degrees in my car. Oof. And she was just oh, out man, there. You have to buy a jacket. Boobs, belly, and I think there were some shorts in there somewhere, but they were hard to see. It was quite interesting. <laughs> mm. I don't know. Well, anyway. It's also, oh my gosh, you know what else is the funniest part about that that I just remembered? Is when you see only a guy parked in the in the driver's seat. And then you can just see them trying to pretend like they're doing something and not parked. Whether they're in the middle of getting something done to them. Or if they're like waiting for the person to come by or something, but it's just so funny. Like, you know, when you get caught doing something and you're trying to pass it off, it's just so funny. Cause especially when everybody knows what's going on there, it's like, uh, buddy, buddy, don't act like you're looking directly at the, uh, the visor or anything like that. You're on mute partner. Hey, you're on mute. There you are, buddy. If they were smart, they would just be sitting in their car rolling up. That's what they would do. Like, it's the easier way out of everything because you got to roll up in your car. Like, I mean, it's just so funny. Simple. The, like, the you're things not I get to see. on the block in 40 degrees of weather and roll up. Just pull out your blunt, pull out your weed, roll it up, bro, and you look like you're just in your car rolling up like a normal person. Yeah, but it's then you're smoking you're weed, and, and then if you do get busted by the cops, then it's like, damn, 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 damn. What? There's no damn for California. The weed ain't shit. You're, you're not, not allowed to smoke it out in public. You're in your car. You're not in public. That's DUI, son. You aren't driving. I ain't say start the car. I said sit in the car. Can't you yeah, okay, DUI then, if your car is not there isn't, Trust me. As somebody who has had a DUI before, there's all kinds of different things where it's... I mean, you have to have it locked in the glove box or in the trunk. Oh, that's not the rule of Virginia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there's there's it. that. The consumption has to be in your private residence. It's not allowed to be in, in a mobile vehicle or anything like that. So there's certain oh, yeah. stuff. If you're in a no, no, not mobile, but you're in a parked car, as long as the key's not in admission in Virginia, you're good. Hmm. Interesting. I think they treat it the same as alcohol. Like that's no the same for alcohol, con- though. Open, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but open container. You could be parked if there's an open container of alcohol in your car, even if you're not driving, you're not allowed to have that. Unless it's secured oh. in a certain thing or whatever. Like you can't have it in the cup holder. You can't have a blunt in the ashtray 
and then be driving around. They're no, like, no, no, no. Uh, you can't. You me. can't be driving at all. No, but you can be stable with a blood and right? And they can't search your car just for the smell. So technically speaking, you you're good. Mm. All right. I didn't know that. I'm gonna research that more. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if those are the same rules that I like. Because I mean, come on. I'm no, white. Virginia's a Commonwealth. We have a lot of separate different. I know, but the cops here. probably aren't gonna fuck with me that much. <laughs> they used to fuck with me a lot. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, speaking of messing with stuff, let's move on to sports. That was fun. Let's move on to sports. Get on these juicy balls, just like you, Mike. <laughs> So for some reason I knew that was coming. There's an article out, and we had discussed these home runs and the Albert Pujols and Aaron Judges of the world, and like, what the hell's going on? These balls got to be messed up. So there is some physics scientist, very well renowned, blah blah blah. We read an article about he did some research. Now, granted, yes, did. it's a very selective pool, okay? I'm admitting that at the top. I read this article. I'm like, okay. You can you can argue the other side that there wasn't enough research done. However, there was enough research done to where it's like, well, yeah. That makes sense. So, basically, <coughs> what this scientist, question mark, came up with is that there were three different densities to these balls okay and it was after 2021 they're supposed to have rawlings was having a new manufacturing process and then in the in 2022 they had to change it again admittedly by the mlb so they're admitting that there should at least be two different kind of balls out there and so their quote so insider who did this report has them labeled as three different categories. One is juiced, which obviously means that those balls are going out. One is dead, which obviously means that those balls are super dense. They're not going to fly out of the park. And then one that they deemed Goldilocks. And Goldilocks, as you can imagine, is kind of like the best ratio for getting it out of the park, and the pitchers are able to throw it at a high velocity, all this stuff, which helps the batters get the ball out of the park. I don't know if you know that. Little uh, Absolutely. equal opposite reaction situation. Um, well, if it didn't know that, it just isn't intelligent at all, but go ahead. Oh, why are you going to say that? What if there's a three-year-old listening? No, well, then they're not supposed to know that, but I'm saying any, anybody over the age of 18 doesn't understand that power to velocity ratio that throwing it with more power gives it more velocity going the opposite direction and that type of scientific stuff then they should go back to school same just saying you're frozen but i can hear you so we're gonna keep going um okay so this researcher he studied 204 balls from 22 different ballparks okay that's not all of them i get that so in his findings, the things that I found most interesting was consistently in the postseason, in the World Series, and in the All-Star game, like all the games that really matter, that's where he found Goldilocks balls. Kind of like the perfect power-to-weight ratio to not, not be over the top about these things going out, but definitely pitchers are at a disadvantage. So much so that even the Mets pitcher, Chris Bassett, I think, at the sa- at the beginning of the season was like, the MLB knows we have issues with these baseballs. We've told them oh, this really? umpteen times, and they keep saying story. they're going to work on it. So even MLB pitchers are like, yeah, we uh, they're all different. So... ML, so Major League Baseball, at the beginning of the 2022 season, they had one of their historically lowest run totals in many years. That was not the case by midseason and the end of the season. It was like the runs were abundant. They overcompensated. So it's just all these things. That's a more of a conspiracy theory angle, but it's still fun. <laughs> but here's the other thing. And here's where the subjective collection... Eh, I don't know. Um... But the only 
regular. Hey, there you are. Good job. Turn it off and turn it back on. You're smart. Um, the only regular season Why games that had world? Goldilocks. The, the <laughs> only regular season games that had Goldilocks balls. Guess where they were caught? New York. Yankee Stadium. The New only York. regular season mm-hmm. stadium that used Goldilocks balls. I can probably guess exactly when they were caught. In between 60 and 62. They oh, no, no, no. Down. They're saying like for like the second half of the season at Yankee Stadium, they had these yeah. balls. Now, what I'm thinking is, okay, obviously MLB maybe had something to do with where these balls were. You know, I uh, check St. Louis. Also, what if the Yankees just have the best equipment manager? They found out about these Goldilocks balls and they're like, hey, 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 give us all those ones first. No, no, no. It's, this was a whole money, money grab thing. You can't let them go too far above the number. Do you end up? They ended up already paying him three sixty. Imagine if he hit seventy home runs. That's four hundred million easily. They were like, okay, look, we're we're locked into the fact that he's got forty at the All Star break, so he's going to break this number, and we're going to enjoy the ratings that come with that. But we're not going to let him smash this number because this is going to cost us way too much. And it almost cost him Aaron Judge letting them get to the sixty two because the his price went up almost to a point where they didn't want to pay. I like the Yankee business sense. We'll get to that in a bit. I like the way they went about it, though. Okay, they so let's the, just get right into it then. So Aaron Judge signed a nine-year, $360 million deal with the Yankees, which we knew was going to happen. They only had the Giants in there for a bidding war. They, The Padres wanted to throw their hat. They're like, yeah, go ahead. Keep, yeah, go and never, pump up the it volume. It was a bidding war because the Padres offered the most. They offered 400 Yeah. What the, what the Yankees did was they let them set the market. Yeah. So they said, well, we don't know what we want to pay you because we only want to pay you two seventeen for seven years, which you're not going to accept. Right. So after this great year, you go out and you find out what the market is. When the number is set, we'll match that number. You come back to the Yankees. But we're not going to give you a number because then you're just going to argue and we're going to have to negotiate and go back and forth. So whatever you go out and get and negotiate on your own, we'll just match that and you'll come back to the Yankees. Right. Then he went out and got nine years, 36, 360. They were like, okay, we'll give you the same thing. Come on. He never wanted to leave the Yankees. He said that all season. And these fools are dumb for putting the number out there. They should have been like, nah, if you're going to sign with the Yankees, better war with the Yankees. Make them pay whatever your number is. We're not going to, you're not going to use us. But he got away with it. He used the Giants, and that's fucked up. Shout out to the Giants. I hope they sign somebody good. Mm. They signed somebody that I don't even know who he is. Who? I don't know. An outfielder. All right, so how many years out of this nine do you think Aaron Judge will actually be productive and decent and earn? Three. Yeah, exactly. He wasn't even that productive last year. Like, if people want to know, his split last year was like 270, 35, and like 80. I give him two to three solid years, and there's no guarantee that they're even back-to-back. Like, I would say he's probably going to have a down year next year. Then he'll have an okay year the year after. And then maybe another good year after that. And then there will be a couple years where he doesn't have any good years. And then maybe gets traded to the Rangers. And then has a resurgence. And then... But they did resign again. that first baseman also, right? Because that was his protection in the order. So Joey Votto? Gene Carlos Stam. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Uh, Votto was on the, the Cubs. Um, I don't know. Um, I can't think of his name. He was on the Cubs previously. What's wrong with your tooth, man? You've been all in your mouth the whole episode. There's okay? something stuck in the back, like in between my tooth and my gums, and I can't get it, but it's like I can feel it. Oh, yeah, those are irritating. That's why I keep a toothpick with me, bro. I know, but not um, on the podcast. Shout out to the Red Sox for actually trying to be good this year. Dude, first of all, no. Kenley Jansen signing, that's off. They, they're terrible. They're but never we just signed good. the Chinese dude from the, the good Chinese dude, Yoshida. We just signed him today, too. Oh, We're okay. trying to be good. We needed bullpen help, and we need outfield help because they decided to let the entire outfield from our championship run. That's their thing. What other team does that? Just the you Red win Sox. win a championship and let the entire outfield go. Not one part. All three. You yeah, but you guys have Alex you, Verdugo, so that's cool. Alex Verdugo is not bad, but he's not superstar. I know, but that's what I'm saying. Like, he's, you know. Mm. 
Yeah. He's one of your guys. They, That's not that great. If they don't resign Bogart, then Rafi's probably soon to leave next year. So we're going to go back to being trash. Yeah. Like you have to sign Bogey for Rafi to stay. Because Rafi's already said, like, Bogey's his guy. He wants Bogey on the team. They started negotiating with Bogey as of yesterday, though. At first, they weren't even negotiating with him. But if Trey Turner got $300 million, Bogey's never going to be in Red Sox. And yeah, so Trey Turner, dude, the Phillies are going to be insanely good next year again. Because yeah, listen, right. here's the thing. They were okay, and Bryce Harper was out for a decent portion of the year. Okay? Yeah. Next year, Bryce Harper is going to be out for the first half of the year. However, the Phillies still have JT Real Muto. They signed Trey Turner. They still have... Uh, yeah, What's their boy Zach Wheeler? But their pitching stunk. Like it in the playoffs, it came like it showed. They weren't they weren't really that good. Yeah, but Zach Wheeler still Nola's on the really team. Not that good. But their offense is getting even better because now they have Trey Turner. And then here's the thing: if they could just be in the mix at the All Star break, and then Bryce Harper comes back like he did for the playoffs, it's like oh shit, Philly might be a problem. And if they could trade for a pitcher, I mean, Bob's your uncle. They're they're right there with. The Braves in the NLCS. If they can get a pitcher. Yeah, but here's the other thing, too. The Mets are probably going to be dishing either Scherzer or Verlander. They're both on their, like, two-year deal. Scherzer's on his weird, I can leave whenever I feel like it. But DeGrom took the money and went to the Rangers. The Mets signed two old dudes. They got Verlander and they still have Scherzer. Those are their horses now. And it's like, okay... Scherzer and DeGrom made me feel a lot better than Scherzer and Verlander. These guys in the twilight. The Mets signed Verlander? I didn't see that. For a two-year deal, yeah, to replace DeGrom. So they're, uh, they got two old guys. Like, they're trying to do oh, the oh, Kurt oh. Schilling, Randy Johnson, Diamondbacks thing. Oh, and I'm like, will be traded before the end of the season. That's what I'm sure. saying is the Mets are they, – they had a good run. They had a chance to do something. They epically mets it up and failed. And they're gonna suck for a long time again. Give it another ten years. That's after Pete Alonso learn. retires, then they'll they'll go on another two year run, and then they'll suck for another decade. Because they didn't learn what the Nationals learned. You pitch Scherzer at the crib. Yeah, you don't give him game one on the road. That's not Scherzer, baby. That's he needs Scherzy, the crowd baby. behind him. He needs all that for his first start. His second start, he can pitch anyway. But yeah. the first one of the playoffs, you always have to pitch him at home. The Nats found that out. That's why he went game three. <laughs> First the Dodgers. You don't put him in those road games. He's got too much adrenaline. And the crowd's not on his side. When he's at home, he, his adrenaline's still going, but it's not having to reach that same level. because he's Yeah, but the he's the, yeah, because when he's at home, he's channeling the energy – because he's an intense yeah. dude. He's channeling the energy. He when he's on the road, he's fighting the energy. Fighting the energy. And it's like, yeah, yeah. you're not, you're, you know, it's like you're not Pedro Martinez. You can't just go in there and just be like, no, 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 middle finger, I'm coming here. You know? Yeah. Who's That's your problem, daddy? All right, speaking of uh, many, many things, let's move on to college football. Uh, Mike, last week. You ate a shit sandwich, okay? I went five and one. You went two and four. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm done gambling because I've been eating shit sandwiches a lot. And three times this year, the football pool that I'm in, that you have to pick all the games, Mm -hmm. three times I've lost on Monday night on the very last play. Every time, very last play. I lost Monday night. The Raiders, who was the Raiders? You recapped the first two last week. What's the most recent one? Tom Brady. (laughs) <laughs> I had the Saints. They're winning their fucking entire game. If Mark Saints, Ingram yeah. falls forward, the game's over. Yeah, They don't have enough time to drive if he picks up that first down. He sprained his MZL and runs out a half a yard short, and they've been picking up yards all game and can't get a half a yard. And on third down, they do a damn pass to Mark Quez Callaway. <laughs> Are you goddamn kidding me? <laughs> you got it. Come on, your team. You got Hill running the the Wildcat. You got all this shit going on. And the biggest play of the game for you all to stay in the playoff push at all and beat the Bucks. 
you get Andy Dalton throwing it to Marquez Callaway. Like, how do you, you not just line up me? Taysom Hill at fullback, Kamara fullback. at running back, and then that way they at least have to take on Hill. You just have Kamara sp- split to the other side. It's, I, I mean, come on. Right. I don't know. It, 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 it's epic fail, but it, you know what it, You know what this telling me? Because I'm not supposed to win. My luck is up. Gambling is not Yeah, but me. okay, that turn. that was an unlucky thing. You went two and four in college bowl games, and I went five and one, okay? So what... All right, who did I... I don't want to recap, but recap. The first recap one was uh, we had the USC-Utah Caleb Williams-Cam Rising debate, and Cam Rising just washed the Trojans. He threw for 300-something yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. Like, no, had a game. They, they pulled the Cowboys. They literally went on a 44-7 to run. 44-7 to run? How, that shit doesn't happen in college football. Like, it does to USC, and it does for Utah. That's why Utah is always, like, scary. So, and I won the Utah game. Dude, you lost. They uh, the hand this dude the Heisman, and he got a 44-7 to run against him. Yep. How do you only scare – up there, when they give them the hazard, they should ask them, how the hell did you only score seven points in two and a half quarters? That's what they should ask him since he's a damn high bum. He's All a right, loser. next game, I'm sorry. Next game, Kansas State outright beat TCU. I was on the give me the points against TCU bandwagon. Yeah, uh, we both lost. I would have covered if they didn't get stopped because that was bad coaching too. Matt Duggan gets you all the way down the field on the game-winning drive, and overtime, you don't let him run at all. Like, what the fuck do these coaches be thinking? Stick with what got you here, buddy. Matt Duggan Everybody's trying to drive. outsmart everybody. It's like, just exactly. let your Dude athletes be here. better athletes. How about that? Last drive of the game, he literally got all 97 of the yards. All 97. Bananas. And in overtime, you give it to some fucking running back two times in a row. Are you dumb? The coaches are stupid. All right, next. I'm sorry. Much. We both lost LSU versus Georgia because we both took the 17 and a half. They lost by 20. They were getting waxed. And then they kind of almost covered, but there was never a game. Um, Tulane covered against UCF. You took UCF. Uh, Michigan covered against Purdue. They did not cover the first half, but they beat them by 20. Spread was 17. And then uh, Clemson handled North Carolina. They handled my boy. It's <laughs> fucked up. So yeah, I, I went five Drake and one. You better. went two and four. I pick with my brain. You pick with your heart. And you know what also happened? Tell me. Fucking Clemson bit DJ. The new guy's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> turns out. <Yeah. laughs> At the last game of the season, that guy sucks. You finally figured it out, Dabo. Good job. Dabo, you fucking let him play Ding for dog. two years, bitch. Bench your other quarterback for this dude who fucking stinks. All right, so listen. Next week, we'll do a bowl pick 'em. We'll do. We'll run the gambit. Okay. We'll All do. Right. We could just do winners, or we could do against the spread if you want. I prefer winners. Yeah, if you want to bring that many spreads to the table, that's on you. Not cool really, because winners. also the <laughs> spreads are so far in advance. You know, it's like, that would be tough. Like, the lines can change all over the place. So, I just say we pick winners. But, how do you feel about, so we'll do that next week. As a little tease, we'll go give you our college football bowl rankings, or bowl picks, for this uh, this season. College football playoff. How do you feel about the four teams in there? You fine with it? Perfectly fine. I love it. Yeah, and TCU plays Michigan, which is which the game we want to see. going to be a romp. Michigan's going to crush. And I believe so. Ohio State's playing Georgia. Georgia's going to crush. I don't think so. I think that's going to be a hell of a game. Mm. Only thing about OSU just missed, like they're losing uh, a Jigba. He said he's not going to play. But he ain't played most of the season. Their wide receiving court is lit. If yeah. they can block, that's the problem. If they can block up front, yeah, bomb, if they give him time, but if if they don't have time, because that, because that, um, oh, that's gonna be tough. Georgia's running game is nice, and Michigan just ran the ball down Ohio State throat. But Michigan's quarterback is a lot better than Georgia's quarterback. I truly believe. That. Yeah, but I don't think Stetson Bennett's gonna be. You know, they're gonna need him to throw his hundred and eighty-two yards. Two touchdowns, no interceptions, and one of the touchdowns is going to be like a flick to the tight end with three minutes to go, 
to the they go up by ten or fourteen, and then he's flexing like he's winning the Heisman. This little you know run. what is bullshit? The fact that he's a Heisman finalist and he didn't even win SEC Offensive Player of the Year. That's garbage. Like what? The it's guy garbage. who won Offensive Player of the Year is not a finalist, but you're a finalist, but he get the best player in your conference. That doesn't even his add offensive people. line deserves to be in the Heisman <laughs> fucking ceremony more than he does. Yeah, I don't understand. Like, I don't understand how people be coming up with this shit. Yeah, I want to see him do what Eric Crouch did, and they're like, "No, you can't play quarterback in the NFL. Go try wide receiver." And then he gets cracked and never comes back for the rest of his life. <laughs> Do you remember that? Eric Crouch wants to play like safety. Then the Packers are like, okay, this Nebraska quarterback that was just on fire could run like crazy. And then they're like, okay, try wide receiver. And in a preseason game, he went and did a slant and got cracked over the mill by a linebacker and never played football again. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's the end for him. All right, let's move on to uh, NFL Week 14. I've got a few picks that I like here. We'll see what you have, and then we'll... uh, Run this thing out. So, NFL Week 14. First game that I love is Vikings versus the Lions. Lions are favored by two and a half. Lions are favored by two and a half? Exactly. Ooh. Give me I the like Vikings. The, I, thought, I thought the Vikings were giving the points. I don't know if I can take the Lions with the points. I think the Lions might win the game, though. Nope. Give me Vikings. I'm taking a money line as well. Already have. Give me, give me the Vikings. Give me uh, the Vikings for the win. Eagles versus Giants, but you want the points. No, no, no. I thought at first I thought that I don't want. The, I'm definitely not taking the Lions. No, no, no. I'm oh, saying, yeah, yeah. but you're no, not give sure me the about the Vikings. Vikings yeah, you go give me the Vikings. Yeah, you're taking the points. Two points. Yeah, yeah. Give me the two. All right. Me the uh, Eagles versus Giants. Giants are getting seven. Give me the give me the Giants and the points. Oh, give me the Eagles. Um, I'm gonna take the Eagles. Ravens versus Steelers. Steelers favored give by two Steelers. and a half. I don't give a shit. Give me the Steelers and the points. Whatever I'm, I'm taking the Ravens. With that stink ass quarterback, have fun with that. They're just gonna run. They got J.K. Dobbins back, and they have three running backs that you know they can wear down a team if they're changing out running backs all the time. So it'll be a stink fest for the first. Three Can't quarters. run out the team if you're going three and out. Like this, we're talking about the Steelers defense. This ain't like some old other regular team. It's the Steelers. I understand that. It's going to oh, be okay. a very low scoring 10 to 13, 10 to 14 game. But, you know, the fourth quarter winning drive is all I really need there. And as much as I don't want to say it, this next game is probably the upset of the week and it's going to fucking hurt my soul. Seattle Seahawks for Carolina Panthers. Panthers are getting three and a half points. Who are you taking? Yeah, that, uh, I believe the Panthers are going to win, and I definitely believe they're going to cover. Ah. But I think the Panthers are going to win straight up. Their defense at home just plays different, man. See, and this game I was I very nervous about, and you're kind of swaying my pick. But I'm going to stick with Seattle because I already put money on them. And as much as I don't want them to win, I think they are. I need Seattle to keep winning. The one team I don't want to make the playoffs is your team. Sorry to say, <laughs> and I definitely don't want them hosting a home game. Maybe the, even with Brady Purdy, I it that was the one team in the NFC out there. <laughs> it's too many all pros on that team, man. Like yeah. that team is fucking outrageously stacked. Like I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Like the drafting they did, I don't know when all these people are gonna get paid though. Like when is when is Bosa up for money? See, when but, is well, Warner Bosa, it's for money? only is. Third year, second year, like he's okay, still, so he's about to, he's coming up. Soon. Yeah, he's yes. got. I think not next year, but the year after. In two years is when he's his five year deals up, and then they'll have to pay him. But, but he'll that's like get money out the four. That's like so he's probably well, they let DeForest the Buckner go to the Colts, yeah, and it was like, whoa, letting you're go. letting one of our best D linemen go, and it's like, don't worry, we got yeah, somebody you else. Knew you had backup. You ain't got backup for Bosa. Right. Bosa well, you know what? Account. Nobody does. Ask the Chargers. Exactly. You know what I'm saying. So, Bosa's speaking of, of which, he's going to get paid. That's is Warner going to get paid? That's the question. <laughs> he he better come on. That dude is a linebackers maniac. are is not linebackers are not a position they get paid. Yeah, you Wagner. know what though? The Niners were willing to pay Patrick Willis. They gave him a badass deal when not a lot of linebackers. He was one of the higher paid linebackers in the league. He got and paid Warner more than is super should. nice. So if he doesn't get paid. He's going to be like Fred Warner is big money on the yeah he. There's so many. Only place y'all don't have all pros is at 
like defensive Warren back. back. So you got all pro at linebacker. All but pro even Jimmy Ward line. is a solid safety, dude. Yeah, he is very solid. You got all pro at offensive line, all pro at wide receiver, all pro at tight end, all pro at running back. Like that, I'm not talking Pro Bowl people. I'm talking about all pros. Like yeah. the 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 all stars of the all stars. <laughs> yeah, man. Like that team is pretty stacked. I, I hate that. All right, so I have year. two. Like I, I've been going on upset trains, but two of the games coming up too. Uh, Chargers versus Dolphins. Dolphins are favored by three. I like the fact that you're picking it. I don't agree with it. I don't. After a loss with that Chargers defense, I feel bad for them going to play the Dolphins. That might get ugly. Yeah, I think the Chargers might take it. And but it all depends on if the Dolphins' offensive line is back healthy. If Armstead comes back, if the uh-huh. other guy, if they're still not healthy, then you got to legit. And the last upset game is the Cardinals over New England on Monday night. New England's favored by one and a half. I like the Cardinals in this game. I don't like them at all. You know what Belichick does to these mediocre quarterbacks, bro. Yeah, that's true. But James Conner's back, so they can kind of run the ball now. And I don't know. The Cardinals just got a little bit of something. D-Hop's back. You know, they got something cooking here. So Yeah, but I you d- know, locker room, when locker that's rooms true. are not together, things don't go well. Like the Golden yeah. State Warriors, Arizona's Cardinals locker room is not – they're not getting along. They're not yeah, together. Yeah, it's not kosher right now. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. But my anyway, my money coach. line parlay – is Vikings, Ravens, Cardinals. Instead of six to one, it pays nine to one. That's my big bet of the week. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's close this thing out fairly quickly here. Uh, I beat the brakes off you in fantasy football this past week. W- wasn't even close. You wasn't did. even close. One ninety six to one twenty six. Doesn't matter. Okay, my defense had thirty points, which by the way, I picked them up. So uh, you know, kudos to me. Thank you. Yeah. But I did also I mean, beat NFL you by games. 70 points. So even if yeah. my defense didn't play, I would have beat you by a 40. Yeah, you had a good week. Congratulations. Crushed you. No way. But, but here's um, the thing. You have a they chance. They scored 30 points in a game in which their offense scored no. Like how many times that you know do you that you come across where a defense scores more points than the offense in the game and the offense scored The Niners three. did the year they went to the Kaepernick-Alex Smith year. The Niners' defense was scoring 35 points a game like three different times a year. But needless to be said. These dudes scored two touchdowns. Yeah. Had a punt return. Like, what? Yeah. What the fuck? It was fucking amazing. They had an amazing day. And it happened on me as I knew it would. It's all good. You better hope I don't make this because in the playoffs it'll hurt that much more that you beat me twice in the regular season and then I kick your ass. Well, listen, yeah, you're not, you, you, got you got some work to do, yeah. but know, you, I you, know. I know. Okay. Cause listen, the top six in our league, make it, you are currently seventh, I think. Okay. Seven. I play number six and you play number eight. So if I beat six and you beat eight, you're in because you have more points than six. Like you're going to points wise. If you win, you're in. in. Now, that being said, I can bench my team, coast into the playoffs, <laughs> still might even get a bye if I only score like 50 points and third place loses. And I can make sure that you are not in the playoffs. But yes, fifth place is only 24 points ahead of me. So technically speaking, I can catch wifey too. So yeah, that's true. But you know, you got to win first. Got to win. And I got to score a lot of points. So I got to get my premium lineup for this week. I'm just going to, I think I am just going to coast in and get my bye week because I don't really want to, I don't want to mess with it. But. If I do get a wild hair up my ass, I could ensure that you don't make the playoffs. Technically, you could ensure you could help me not make the playoffs, but you have no insurance because whoever Dow plays, if they beat her and I outscore her by twenty points, I get it. She sixth place. She's is not playing the only first one place. Ha ha. 
who currently has his team benched. His really? entire team except for his kicker and his defense. Really? So what if we both pull the mic move, a little collusion action? Then you'd be keeping me out, but then that's not integrity. <laughs> Whoa, Why is he integrity. Why? Why are they benching their team? It's Christmas, and that's what my wife asked for Christmas. She asked oh, okay. the maestro, cool. my dad, to bench his team so she can make sure that she makes the playoffs. Absolutely, then that's what you should do. If someone asks you for a Christmas present, and if the other person asks you, I'm not upset about it. Bench your team, Brandon. Christmas overweight. Are you Are you asking me to do my best to demolish sixth place to give you an opportunity to win your way into the playoffs? Are you asking me to lay a beat down on sixth place? Always, I'm always asking whoever to lay a beat down because that's okay. the name of the game. All right. But – and Maestro in Dallas, is, that's different. That's her dad-in-law. That's, that's a whole different ballgame. All right. All right. Well, spit, speaking of nothing, let's just switch over to uh, what you're watching. I know you're just watching sports. You haven't been watching nothing else. Or I have you? I haven't been watching anything. Um, I, mean, I actually was watching The Wire the other day. Um, Did you not finish it over summer? I've been watching. I just watch it again randomly. But you know what? I did watch a movie the other day, but I couldn't finish it because it upset me so much. What is it? Ooh. 137 shots. Have you ever seen that? No. When did it come out? I don't know when it came out, but I was randomly bored because I was. I had to watch stuff on Netflix because my cable had went out. Uh, something like somebody cut the files line or some shit, so we had to wait. So I was watching Netflix on my phone. 137 shots is a movie about a. Car chase in Kohino. I don't even remember the city. Hold on. Because I don't want to give out incorrect information. Whatever. In which the police fired 137 shots into a car that was later determined the people in the car had no weapon. Oh. And yet, no one was ever tried, no one's ever went to jail. And 10 years later, I believe, like, a couple people got fired. That's it. And I had to cut it off when I got to that part. But, like, nothing happened to no one. I was like, what? Isn't that at the end? No. Um, in Cleveland. That's where it is. Oh, yeah. Cleveland. That sounds about right. Um, no, it, it is at the end. But I didn't, I, you know me, I got intrigued and Googled it. And when I Googled it, Got nothing it. happened to anybody, I cut the movie off. Okay. That is bullshit. Yeah. And this is not about race, even though it was black people in the car. It's not about race, because I don't give a fuck what race you are. If the yeah. police... You can't do that. First of all, there's no reason to shoot 137 shots at no damn body. 137? That means multiple people empty whole clips, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not... that. that first of all, that's absolute... They were done after 30. If you didn't kill, if police can't kill somebody with 30 shots, then the, y'all need to go y'all back to training because they <laughs> train y'all to shoot. So it's no way. But after this shit, the car was so bullet riddled that police cars were bullet riddled. Like they were just shooting to be shooting. Like they were basically shooting at each other. You know what I'm like it was like, oh, they're shooting back at us. No, it's the police on the other side of the damn car shooting at you dummies. Oh my god! It's, it's like yeah. After I read it, I was just so perturbed that I had to cut it off. But yeah, yeah I, I get that. Like half of that. Um, what else did I watch? I'm trying to think because I do watch stuff randomly that isn't sports. Um, I watch morning shows on Fox. Like I watch both of those shows. I watch Nick and I mean Skip and Shannon, and I watch again Nick Wright, even though he comes on the afternoon now. Um, Nothing on any. Streaming services since your ass doesn't go to the movies? No, I haven't been on a streaming services watching much. Like, no love is blind, none of that. None of my normal shows. I don't, you know, I don't know. I've been dealing with a lot, man. My mom's been having surgeries and mm. had a lot going on in life. Like, she's had multiple surgeries. So, there's a lot going on. I have time to sit down and enjoy life. But she's coming through okay. She's had both. All is well. She just celebrated her birthday. So, life should be getting back to normal soon, and I'll be watching bullshit. Excellent. Well, I got through uh, about a third of the movie Spirited, which is Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds on Apple TV+. Plus. It's pretty damn good. It's like kind of a musical, 
but it's just it's a sweet, awesome, fun holiday movie, Christmas movie. It's great. Um, okay. I got through about a third. It was good. I'll probably revisit it and try and watch the whole thing because I'm gonna try and watch it with. It's PG thirteen, but it's like you know, it's low end PG thirteen. I just got to make sure that the ending, there's no big reveal about Santa or anything, so I can let my kid watch it. Um, so Spirited was pretty good. Which kid? My nine-year-old. If it's PG-13, I got to do a little recon before I let him watch it. Do you think Mickey still believes in Santa? I think he's 50-50. <laughs> I think he is aware that other people don't, but there's a part of him that's like, yeah, but maybe that's just your house. <laughs> so mm. we're going to keep, we think this might be the last year, unfortunately, that it's like, we can really sell them on it. So we're going to do our damnedest to make it happen. You know, if he truly thinks there is, I'd be. You just mu- muted yourself. No, you just muted yourself. As, there it is. I know I did as bright as he is. I'd be surprised if he actually truly... He might just be smart enough to know to keep going along with it for you all's purpose. No. That's how much credit I give him. No, he's all... Just because not not him, just the people talk so much and there's so much going on in this world that people just, you know, blurt it out or say stuff or yeah, do stuff. Yeah, we that. also teach him to think for himself, though. So hopefully he's Absolutely. on that kick. And, you know, I you can just tell, especially with your own kids, and we can tell that he's had been a, in those conversations or okay. they've been around him but he shrugs them off you know he may pretend that? to his friends like i think he's still on the side maybe he's 55 45 because i think he's still on the side where if like his friends or somebody at school said that he'd be like oh yeah i know and then walk away and be like mm, nah you know what i mean yeah, like it's, it's a blessing man because i was what 12 or 13 before i was Oh man, that is these late. kids can't even make it to eight. Like I was twelve, thirteen. I'm like I remember at twelve years old, still talking about throwing carrots on the rooftop in the projects because rain did like carrots. So like, like it went for a while for us. Man. Even though I don't know why or how, because if we had any smart we know Santa can't come down a project chimney, bro. But <laughs> shit went on for a while. <laughs> That's I guess good. we just I, wanted to believe it. You, you, the way that, how did you find out there was no Santa? I mean, we just realized it at some point, I uh, guess. I, I remember, really I remember. think I, I was, was like no big reveal. I think I was like seven or eight. And I remember vividly, like, I'm going to test this theory. <laughs> and I walk into the garage where the maestro used to hang. And I was, you know, we're kind of hanging, whatever. And it's December, Christmas time. You know, I'm just like saying goodnight or whatever. I'm just like, you know, something came up about Santa. I was like, Dad, you know, I know there's no Santa. And he's like, oh, okay. I don't, you know, I don't know. Whatever. All right. And I was mm-hmm. just like, all right, good night. And I went in my room just like, oh, no. Why did I ask? <laughs> he told me because he didn't want to play it off anymore. He didn't realize. I just went up with so much confidence like, dude, I know. Stop it already. And he's like, yeah, okay, we will. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I think it was just like my brother told us after a while. Like my mom was waking us up and we kept talking that Santa stuff. And then we were like, oh, you can't wake up. So I'm peppering your eyes, you know, all those stories. My brother was like, bro, mom buys the gifts. Like, chill out. Let's <laughs> like, I think I think something like that happened for us. And we was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And we just went with it. Oh, man. Well, to run through what I... I haven't watched Echo 3 yet. That's on Apple TV+. Plus. It looks really cool about some, like, extraction-y type military thriller, whatever. Um, but I'm on Apple TV because Slow Horses is back. I have no clue what that is. It's I watched it. It was it's a limited series that it was six episodes when it first came out last year or whatever. Um, it's another six episodes I think for season two, and it's just fantastic espionage, all that kind of stuff. It's really really good stuff. Um, about like the MI6 program and all that jazz. Uh, mm-hmm. But I did just watch Bullet Train. On Netflix with Brad Pitt. What's that about, buddy? It's 
a goofy action movie where it's it's literally just hand to hand combat on a train, a bullet train in Japan <laughs> or whatever. This I had seen in the theaters actually most of it, and then I kind of rewatched it on Netflix, and it's exactly what you want it to be. Some of it I didn't even have the volume on because it was late at night. I just had like subtitles because there's only limited dialogue, so you can kind of just be like, "Oh, what do you say?" Okay, I'm just watching all this action. It's a fun run through. It's like an hour and forty minutes of just nonsense, and not for nothing, it's pretty good. Like, <laughs> I I might rewatch it again at some point. Just have it on in the background type of movie. It's good stuff. Okay, true. Sure. Maybe and I'll then there's two things coming up. There's Guillermo del Toro's uh, Pinocchio. It's like a stop action Pinocchio that's on Netflix coming up December 9th, which is going to be rad. I'm going to check out. And then something I think you're going to be interested in is Lance Last Chance U Basketball's coming back. Season two. Yeah. So Mike will be on that. That's starting in like a week or two. I saw the preview. I didn't see the start date, but I'll definitely be watching that. So I just hate when they do it. The thing about the downside about Netflix, which they're going to change, which I don't know if I'm going to like or not, is that they put it all at once, and I binge it, and then it's over. But they're supposed to go to weekly, but then I don't know if I'm going to like that. I'm going to want to binge then it. You're gonna so, to wait, uh, and then you're going to have to wait, and then you're going to forget, and then be like, oh, I don't even care about that show that much anymore. <laughs> yeah, it happens. So, so well, in honor of you shaving everything... Which we very much appreciate. I very much appreciate. We figured the top five this week. We'll round it out. We'll close it out with something fun. What's your top five pubic hair styles? I didn't know there were five. I only know about three. Okay. <laughs> what are your three? Bald, hairy, landing strip. That's it. <laughs> right. That's it, buddy. Those and what's your preference? Rank them one through three since you only have three. I'm a fan of the good landing strip, but we can go bald. Like, if you want to fully shave it, I'm okay with that. If you want to have a landing strip, we're good there. You can keep that hairy shit, though. I don't want no parts. So, if we rank it one through three, you can rank the first two however you want. We know what number three is. Hairy. Keep that away. So, I guess I would say, like, my preferred method may be just, like, just, like, trimmed. You know, like, whatever you got, like, just short, though. You know, like, just to where it's, like, fuzzy, but stays on you. Does not leave your body that short. You know what I mean? No gotcha. curls to it. Keep it short. But it also can't, it can't be wild. It can't be Demi Moore in the 70s. Like, it can't, <laughs> it can't go to the creases of your legs. Like, where your legs bend, where that, that area is. Well, you probably wouldn't like me because I have hair there, buddy. Yeah, I'm not trying to go down on you, Mike. I'm just saying, <laughs> <laughs> like... You know, the creases, it's got to stop there. If it goes past there, you know, trim the spider web a little bit. Keep it in there. I would say that's kind of like, you know, that's Outside fine. of the bathing suit area, please trim that shit. No hair is fine. Just as, like, if you're just shaving all the time and getting, like, razor bumps, don't do that to yourself. That's Guy, no, girl, doesn't matter. Disgusting. It's, yeah, it's tough. Disgusting. You don't need to do that because then it's sensitive and then people can't go down there and it's not as fun. So, you know, whatever you got to do that's not too invasive. Go for it. That's fine. But again, no bush. No bush, man. We are in the modern ages. Stop it. Yes. I've had conversations with my mom about this bullshit, and she's like, oh, you listen, she's (laughs) the one that brought it up. Just so you know, if you don't have insight into this crazy brain, like these are the kind of conversations that were normal for me to have with my mom. Didn't matter whatever age. So... I mean, not when I was super young, but when I was, after she knew I wasn't a virgin anymore, she was like, oh, okay, we're talking about whatever. She would used to say, like, oh, you like bald, like a little girl? You like when (laughs) girls shave like a little girl? I'm like, listen, you nasty lady. No. No. However, do you cut your yard? Do you trim your grass? Huh? Mm Mm-hmm. I'm just saying it's it's nicer when it's maintained. And so not for nothing, some people like concrete. Okay? It's not a big deal. It's just different levels of friction and interaction with hair. That's it. It's not anything gross if you don't like hair. 
and enjoy it. I just don't. A patch of some kind is fine, like a landing strip or like <laughs> a like a V or like a you know a V. I've well, yeah, just like a, a triangle going the other way. You know what I mean? Like an upside down pyramid. I mean, I've just never seen it. Um, to eat their own. If you want to have fun with your pubes? Go ahead. Cut yourself a triangle, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, black people don't do weird stuff naked. They're just like, we're naked. What are we doing? You know what I mean? White people are like very weird with their... <laughs> and that's the other thing, too. It's like, don't shave a smiley face or an arrow. Like, arrow? Ew. Ew. How many people have seen that? Disgusting. Or if you got, like, the Rolling Stones 40 licks tongue, like, bleh, just right above the beeve. That's weird. And I also don't yeah, like, cool. like if you're going to go through the effort of shaving and then there's like a void or you're going to like try and spell something out. No, use your time. Otherwise, that is a waste of resources and pubes for that matter. Makes sense to me. Honorable mentions, the landing strip, the flying V and alopecia. Why not? <laughs> There you go. That's the way to end the show, right? There. <laughs> Alopecia pubic hair. That's what I'm talking about. Alopecia pubic hair. Saw him at the Voodoo Lounge last night. All right. Well, <laughs> you can check us out each and every th Thursday is the day we come out. I almost said Friday. Uh, each and every Thursday we come out as consistent as possible. Mike, I love you so much. Make sure you, too, you follow man. Mike on Instagram. He is at BlackIrish213. I am at Brendan McCorkle Comedy. We are at Black Irish Pod. If you didn't hear us in the beginning, hear us now. Follow, share, subscribe. Do some kind of a clicky thing. It helps. It's fun to watch other people interact that haven't interacted yet. And it's fun to watch it go to like other countries and stuff. Because the more people interact, the more places it goes. And the internet's worldwide, as the web is called. So it's kind of fun <laughs> to see like weird shit like Bosnia. And you're like, Bo who the fuck is listening to Bosnia? All right, whatever. Cool. <laughs> Glad we're getting clicks in Bosnia. You know what I mean? Go. It's good stuff. Big in India for some reason. I don't know why. Cool, though. I look Indian. Mm. I've been going to a string of comedy shows. We'll end on this. By the way, I've been going to a string of comedy shows where Middle Eastern people are dropping the N-bomb a lot. And I'm like, gosh, gosh, <laughs> gosh. I just, ah, I don't know how to, ah. Because <laughs> here's the thing. Their jokes aren't that good. If they were funny, I'd be like, hey, nailed it. You get away with that. But they're not good. They're like trying to figure it out while they're talking through it. And it's like, you you seem like you're saying it more than you do normally, which <laughs> is not a good thing in this situation. So I don't know how to feel about it. Don't feel about it. Let them do their jokes. And someone feels disrespected by it, they'll let them know, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, it's happened. You see? <laughs> but I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Because I'm like, I don't want to get involved. You're not supposed to say the N-word. <laughs> no. I can tell you that, Brent. Ew, no. <laughs> no. Little secret for episode 101. I've only said that. I Only. I say only. I have said the N-word twice. That I was like not. You know, accidentally slipped out while I was singing a song, and I was like, "Oh, I wasn't paying attention." You know, like, "Oh man, I wasn't paying attention." That's oh, yeah. ah, dang it! Like those happen. Sorry, it happens. It's not supposed to. I'm way better at it now than I ever have been. It's like almost non-existent. But there were a couple of times, there, and both times I was trying to invoke a fight where I was outnumbered, and I was like, "Okay." How am I going to, like, piss them off to come at me so I don't have to go at them? And both times it didn't work, which I'm very glad it didn't. And I'm very sorry for both times I did it. I don't feel good about it. That doesn't sound smart to invoke a fight when you're outnumbered. But I, I thought they were going to kick my ass anyway. So I was like, if they come towards me, I at least have all this. Because one of them was in a cafeteria in middle school. And it was, like, me and, like, four other people were sitting down eating. We had long hair, skaters. And then, all of a sudden, there's just, like, 30 black people around us. And we're like, what? And they're like, we heard you're a racist. We're going to whoop your ass. And they're like, what? 
And then this like keeps escalating and it was just like we got literally backed into the corner of the cafeteria and it was like we can go to them where all the tables and shit are or they can come to us and we have stacks of chairs behind us. Uh, let's try and get them to come to us. And then, you know, you say some nasty shit. Security shows up, Makes breaks sense. it up. The other time was at Halloween. Somebody was bag snatching us. And then <laughs> when we were in high school, by the way, we were drunk, walking around, drunk and stoned, still going trick-or-treating. And then they bag snatched us. And then my buddy fought one of the guys. And then, like, somebody, like, ran, pushed him over, did something, and then, like, a few, like they ran away, and so we were trying to get them to come back so we could square up with them again. That was not cool either. But I will yeah, say I feel better about that being out there. Yeah. As weird as that is. It's done. It's done. All right. Now, how many times have you wanted to kill a white person? No. No! Come on, Mike. You're supposed to save me. I mean, I don't. Honestly speaking, we live different lives, man. I've never had this like to white people. I mean, like when I say different lives, as far as like, I don't know what your interaction with black people were at a younger age. Because where you go, like all my friends now, they might have wanted to kill a white person multiple times because they don't have the same life as me. Even though they my friends for thirty years were different because of my brain and my intelligence. I was had to make some adjustments and learn that different life at a lot younger age. Yeah. So I had white friends. We were close, like because it was just me and them. I had to get close with them. I didn't have any no offense. My friends weren't as intelligent as me. So they weren't in my class or in my like I was putting tag in the second grade. So at yeah. that point, the people in my tag class were of the Caucasian descent. So it wasn't See, that's wasn't, what I was doing, I but I was playing with the black dudes. Like I, oh yeah, so because uh, we I were just. Up, I mean, when you're poor, yeah, uh, yeah you're so poor. Like I said I don't, and that's why I said I didn't mean that directly to you because you yeah, might yeah, have yeah. been grew up with black people, so I don't know. But most of the time, I mean, I'm pretty sure people. my grandparents were super racist, or not super yeah, racist, but you know, they grew up in like the well, Midwest. Not even a racist thing, in, growing up in the O's. who you grew up with. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like my boys, they're not racist, but we just grew up around like we didn't have white people in our neighborhood. Yeah. So, period. Like, you know what I'm saying? They didn't interact with them and understanding how to interact with them and understand there's a difference. It was all stuff that had to be learned behavior. Didn't have to be for me. I was interacting with them and dealing with them, white people from seven, from the age of seven. Like, and not just my yeah. students that were white, but their parents. Because, you know, you get the whole... Oh my goodness, this little smart black guy. Like, what can we do to help? Oh, we just want to, you know, give They're like, we don't know what the blind side is yet, but that's <laughs> the feeling we want. <laughs> yeah, so so I got a lot of love, so I never had any dislike or, like, I didn't grow up with that. You know what I mean? Like, See, I grew up personally. with black people, so I knew that they really didn't like being called the N-word. Oh, yeah. yeah, so I, yeah so I, I don't know if you knew that, dislike. Mike, since you grew up with no, white I, people, but black people, they don't like it. Not yeah, at no, all. No, I know that. I know that. Not even all. a little. Say, right. I don't have any dislike <laughs> or any bad situations or any of that. Of course, you know what I'm saying. So just like that's what it was. All right. Well, on that note, I think we could wrap it up. So be sure to be smart if you're going to be racist. No, that's not the theme of this episode. <laughs> theme of this episode is have some juicy balls. Don't be a racist. And if you used to be, that doesn't mean you still are. Be better. All right. For sure, be better than those before us, man. Let's all move this planet forward, not backwards. You know what I'm saying, people? Yeah. yeah love. Let's do a human cult. Human cult. <laughs> all right. Maybe I'll bring that pitch back next week. All right. On that <laughs> note, we went super long, but that's okay. I love you. Thank you, Mike, for hanging out in the rotunda of wherever you, you too, are and, and coming through. <laughs> uh, be sure to do whatever we said. Okay. Love y'all. Be good to each other. Love you the most, dude. Peace. Love you too, my guy.